Now, it has been more than 20 years since we lost one of the greatest rock stars of our generation, NXS frontman Michael Hutchins. Yeah, his life and death still haunt us. The former detective in charge of the case has given more details in the new podcast series, Police Tape. You've got Michael Hutchins hanging from the back of a door in a hotel room, dead. Well, he actually wasn't hanging from the door at that stage because the belt had broken. Were there drugs found in the hotel room? It looked like paraphernalia in the gas, didn't it? Bits of foil and all that sort of stuff. He had a lot of things in his system. Yeah, Prozac, cocaine. A neighbour has heard him screaming into the phone, threatening and yelling and obscenities and all that. All these things, it was a, a perfect storm. There's a lot of shocking details in this, yeah. and if you or anyone you know needs help, please contact Lifeline straight away. Uh, mm -hmm. 13 11 14, it's always good just to have that there up front, because we are going to talk mm. about this a little bit now. Yeah, and we're joined by criminologist Xanthi Mallet, who's been looking into this as well. Uh, good morning to you, Xanthi. Good morning. Now, in this case, the, the coroner found that Michael Hutchins took his own life, but there have been many people, including some of those closest to him, who were adamant it was accidental. Yeah, I mean, I think in a case of this nature, you're always going to have conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. And as you say, some of the people closest to him have hypothesised that this was actually an accident. However, the coroner reviewed all of the information, and certainly the detectives were clear that this was actually a suicide. So. Um, most people seem now assured of that, but mm -hmm. obviously there are still questions for some people. You know, back in the day when, when this all happened, his partner was Paula Yates, and she made some pretty explosive claims about that death. When things like that happen, and you're an investigator on, on something like this, those external things that start to fly up in the news, people who say they know him, uh, media personalities like Paula Yates, who was, you know, basically with him, uh, except on the night, H how does that affect your job? Well, the police would have been very aware that this was incredibly high profile. I mean, the day that he died, the international media descended on the hotel in which yeah. he was found. Fans were there. So the police are going to be very aware that they're being watched by the public, by the media. But they've got a job to do. It's based on the evidence. Um, and those explosive claims that it was kind of accidental um, by Paula, they, they were not supported by the evidence that the police found. So everyone did their jobs. They reported to the coroner, and the coroner was satisfied that it was suicide. It must have been a shock to many of the first responders when they got there to find out that it, it was Michael Hutchins involved because they, they wouldn't have known that when they got the call. Can that uh, affect the way they then investigate the case when they are feeling all that extra pressure that you're talking about? Well, they would feel that oversight, but I think mm. they've got a job to do. So mm. when you're working on a forensic investigation, you get so embedded in the details, the facts that... Um, the fact that it was Michael Hutchins, I think, would have been a surprise initially, mm. but they would have got over that. They're professionals. They have a job to do. Mm. They would have treated him in exactly the same way as everyone else because no one is more or less worthy of that attention. So they have to make sure they collect all the information to present to the coroner so they can reach a finding. And it's hard to sort of take our mind back at the time, but, I mean, NXS were, you know, headlining Wembley. Mm. This is the biggest star that we'd produced for many, many decades. Uh, so to, let's talk about... You mentioned just briefly that world's media descended on us. How big was this case at the time? Oh, it was huge. You know, Michael Hutchins was a massive star, one of the biggest rock stars probably of all time, really. You know, he was... People still know him. Even, you know, you talk to young people today, mm -hmm. everyone knows who Michael Hutchins is. He's yeah. kind of immortal in that sense. So it was a massive case at the time and still is. You know, we've got this new podcast that's mm -hmm. just been released and it's back in the headlines. You know, he died at 37 and that's kind of immortalised him. So he's mm -hmm. going to remain one of those stars, I think, forever. Well, speaking of that podcast, it's sort of one in a series of these almost true crime podca podcasts that we've been seeing and become fascinated with lately, like the Teacher's mm. Pet podcast. And it seems that they often will lead to uh, renewed interest in the case, which, which can lead to some police breakthroughs. Yeah, in cold cases, I think some of the really good investigative journalism can actually help progress some of these cases. They can lead to new people coming forward, new information for the police. So for cold cases, this kind of new journalism can actually be really valuable. Mm -hmm. It can implicate, have problems for the, the legal system later, like the teacher's pet, and now we've had an arrest. But, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they can regenerate these cases and lead to arrests. Well, Xanthi, it's great to have your company today. For more true crime podcasts out there, check out the 10-part series Police Tape. It's available now from True Crime Australia. And as we said before, if you or anyone you know needs help, please call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Thanks, Xanthi.